the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus and its control of behaviors associated with circadian rhythms. By Maria Camila Sanchez, Biology and Neurobehavior. Circadian rhythms are humans' endogenous biological clocks which use environmental cues known as sidebergs to naturally synchronize our organism to the Earth's 24-hour rotation cycle. The brain's circadian clock regulates sleeping and feeding patterns, alertness, core body temperature, brainwave activity, hormone production, and many other biological activities related to our body's processing during night and daytime. The understanding of these cycles is very important because the alteration or abnormality of circadian clocks can be associated with insomnia, obesity, diabetes, depression, or other disorders. It is known that at different times of the day and night, our bodies perform specific functions more efficiently. In a 24-hour period, these are the most important stages the body goes through. Best coordination at 2.30. Fastest reaction time at 3.30. Greatest cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength at 5. Highest blood pressure at 6.30. Highest body temperature at 7.00. Melatonin secretion starts at 9 and bowel movements are suppressed at 10.30. At 2 in the morning, you have the deepest sleep. At 4.30 is the lowest body temperature. At 6.45 is the sharpest rise in blood pressure. At 7.30, melatonin secretion stops. At 9 is the highest testosterone secretion. And at 10, we have a very high alertness. The first experiments conducted to understand circadian rhythms were done through temporal isolation, keeping individuals in caves for extended periods of time to find if cycles were altered in the absence of sidebergs. Michael Seifer in the year 2000 concluded we all have endogenous clocks that control daily mechanisms. Furthermore, neurobiology extended the research in order to know how the brain mechanisms control such a specific system. Investigator Ralph, in 1990, conducted an experiment in order to prove the role of the suprachiasmatic nucleus in mammalian circadian rhythms. For his experiment, he uses a group of male rats and places them in constant dim light or constant dark. After host rhythms have been established, the rat suprachiasmatic nucleus is lesioned with injections and then their activity is recorded again. Lesions are evident when rats don't show locomotive activity after 24 hours. Later, suprachiasmatic nucleus tissue from fetus rats is transplanted at the place of the lesion. Circadian rhythms prove to be restored unambiguously in 80% of the hosts. Proving the suprachiasmatic nucleus is essential to functioning of circadian clocks. Moreover, we can find evidence of the role of the suprachiasmatic nucleus in circadian rhythms with a case study by R. A. Cohen in 1991. He had a patient that, after a car accident, reported rostral hypothalamic damage that disrupted his sleep-wake cycle patterns, his temperature, and altered his cognitive and behavioral activity. Hormones play a key part in the control of the suprachiasmatic nucleus due to its close relationship to metabolism. Regarding the regulation of the sleep-wake cycle, the main hormone involved is melatonin. In fact, there is a high concentration of melatonin receptors in the nuclei, allowing the immediate effect that suppresses neural activity in the area during the nighttime. In the long term, melatonin can shift and amplify circadian rhythms and it can be used to reduce the effects of jet lag, help shift workers, or even blind people. Melatonin production in our bodies varies throughout the day. Production increases during the evening, reaches a peak at the middle of the night, and falls back again in the early morning when it's daytime. In order to prove the real effect of the hormone in sleep cycles, C. Cahogen in 2003 conducted the melatonin replacement experiment. While mental activity was recorded with an EEG, natural evening increase in heat loss, subjective sleepiness, and melatonin secretion were blocked in a group of humans. 
These same people were injected 5 mg of melatonin. This replacement acutely recovered the evening increase in heat loss, subjective sleepiness, and EEG activity in sleep spindle frequency range increased, confirming the relationship between melatonin and sleepiness. Melatonin weakens the circadian signal from the suprachiasmatic nuclei, promoting heat loss, which induces sleepiness via the preoptic area of the anterior hypothalamus. Knowledge of circadian rhythms has helped us understand our own organism, but there is still a very long way to go in order to understand the wonderful machine our brain is.